I'm David Birmingham. I'm with Bright Light Consulting. Um, I work with the Teaser products. The primary, my primary focus is very large scale databases. I've written two books on the product. You can find them on Amazon.com. The problem is, it's an appliance, and once you know all there is to know, there's nothing left to know. <laughs> so, uh, so now you're just starting to work with the product and stuff. Of course, I have uh, you know, developer works. There's a blog there that I post things to. And the one, the one of my focuses on the developer works is to uh, help get people jump started on sort of an education on what the tease is about, because it's a new influx into IBM. I, IBM has is, is just bought it, and now people are asking all kinds of questions about it, and I seem to be the, the um, you know, fulcrum for that advice. I don't mind that role, I, I just see it as, as something where I need to be responsible and not just assume that people already know everything they need to know, now let's jump into more solutions there's a sort of a, a primer aspect to it to say here's what you, here's something that you need to know in order to be successful with it and we'll use those as building blocks and move forward I'm not forklifting from the books but I'm also not forklifting from the user manuals either so it's a uh, try to keep it as original as possible one of the things that we see uh, well one of the things we see people will have a database that is very uh, that they've really worked very hard on and they've engineered and they've swarmed around it made it work and at some point it runs out of gas and they have to throw in the towel. It's just, it's just not gonna work. Uh, in one case, their processing day was 28 hours a day. They don't have 28 hours, they'd catch up on the weekends. So by putting in the TISA in that particular spot, they shrank that 28 hours down to three. Well, that doesn't really matter to a CEO that you can do things faster or have a slower batch time or, or you know, a, a shorter batch time. But what does matter to a CEO is that they have capacity. They can go out and sell more and then they know they have a place for it. When you have a 28-hour processing day, you can't sell more business. You can't do anything with it. Uh, and that, that's a bad story to tell a new client. Well, the other aspect of that is we'll see that, that product, and they'll start showing it to us, and they'll say, well, can you do this or can you do that? And that, that's not the question I start asking. It's why do you need to do that? What is that box supposed to do? And we'll take it and functionally migrate the things that are in that box over to the Natiza box, and leave 90% of it behind because those are all performance props. They've been propping it up for years with new tables and new indexes, new this and new that, and all this stuff that's just totally artificial. And by the time we get to it, it's time to de-engineer and not re-engineer. And it's amazing, you can find hundreds and hundreds of stored procs reduced into just some very simple flows. And all these tables that just congeal down to something very simple and they're, wow, how can you do that? It's because the uh, there's a, a phrase, you know, that with great power comes great responsibility, but it actually, in, that, in truth, with great power comes great simplicity. <laughs> you can make things very simple if you have unlimited power to do it, and in a lot of cases, Natiza has no indexes. It has nothing that requires you to re-engineer the data to fit a new requirement. So if a business analyst comes up to you and says, I need to query that, that column in the old system, you need an index on it m most of the time. That would require re-engineering of that table, it would require more things to, to load it with, more overhead, all that stuff that goes with it just to fulfill one simple request, but over here, knock yourself out. You want that column, you want that column, no big deal, there aren't any indexes. All the columns behave the same way. Uh, and that's a very compelling story too, because that means those data structures as you've delivered them are as adaptable as they need to be, and very durable for, for a much longer period of time. Another aspect inside the Nantiza machine that people see is <clears throat> they'll want to load data into the box and then query it. And that's a very simple model where you say, uh, I have a data mart, load it, and query it. Um, almost all of Nantiza's competitors center on that particular aspect of the product as a competitive part of the offering. We do everything Nantiza does. And that particular aspect, that's true. If you're just going to load it and query it, there's a dozen other products that do that. But what Natiza allows you to do is something else that's very special. Because the administration is very minimal, I can create and destroy tables with no penalty. And that means I can create and destroy intermediate assets and do transforms inside the machine with very little penalty. If I tried that in another competitor, say Oracle or Teradata, there's a high administration on every table, indexes and objects and things I have to build, to the point where those uh, vendors their admins have even told me, we'll let you do this and we'll let you have these extra intermediate tables. You tell us what you want, we'll build the tables, and those are the ones that you use. I don't want to do that. I want to go in and say, I want to create and destroy these things at will. I want to build transforms and processes and multi-parallel and all kinds of stuff around them. And the teacher lets you do that because the administration for a table literally is, give me the columns, 
And that's the table, and that's it. There's no, there's no other administration for it. Now you contrast that to Natiza. If I take a Natiza machine that has 100 CPUs, I also have 100 disk drives, and those 100 disk drives have their own dedicated RAM, they have their own dedicated pipes. So a CPU and a disk drive are talking to each other. And when I say I want you to move that data from point A to point B, it's not going to pick up all the data and move it from point A to point B. It's going to tell each CPU, go move your part of the data. Because the way a table works in the TESA is, if I have 100 CPUs and 100 disk drives, the table exists logically once, but physically 100 times. Each one of those disk drives carries one one hundredth of the data. So if I say go, all the CPUs are going to go and copy their one one hundredth of the data. And so, and they're going to transform their one one hundredth of the data. We'll contrast that to, say, a, 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 a 96 way or, or a 96 boot box. It has uh, over 800 processors in it. You know, it's going to, it's going to process that 800 ways. So if I want to do a, a simple transform of, of even a terabyte of data, it's going to move where the terabyte is divided among 900 processors and 900 CPUs. And it's going to move very, very fast because it's completely divided and in, in, in massively parallel. And that's a different equation for an Atiza box versus any other kind of box. And then, once you put all the structures in place, if you don't like that, you can throw it completely away because it didn't cost you anything. Putting terabytes of data into a, an Atiza box takes hours. And you may have, you may have uh, completely built up an entire data model and a whole structure in one day, and you don't like it, throw it away. It would take you months to do that in a traditional box. And by the time you got done, they wouldn't let you throw it away. They said, you've got to run with it. We've got to go to production. We're out of time. And so, so that's the other compelling part about the teaser. You can literally squeeze data around and, and play with it, like, like I say, like cookie dough. You can just play with it and, 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 and look at it in lots of different ways. And by the time you're done with it, you know your data really well. This is not something any other box lets you do. I'm a, a big fan of patterns, and, and patterns are where scale is found. You won't find scale in, 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 in the specifics. You'll find scale in the patterns of things. And so by, by building frameworks around patterns and patterns and SQL and patterns and data, we can scale the data up. And I'll give you an example of that. Uh, if I were to go to Walmart and say, tell me where the battery kiosk is, uh, one of the cashiers may say, it's on the end cap on aisle five. Well, that's how an indexing system works. That's how a relational database works. They know exactly where it is. The bigger the database gets, the more time you'll spend scanning the index to go find the data that you want. Okay? And that's never going to scale. When you get to billions of records, it's not going to scale. Now you're, you're scanning that index. And in a teaser box, what they would say is, what, what the lady would say is, it's on an end cap. I'm not sure which one. So now you can walk down and find the, the one, the end cap that you want, and it's maybe on the third end cap, that's fine. But the point is, you didn't look in the entire store. You didn't look in automotive or dairy or wherever else, because she's told you where the data is not. And that's the most important part about the Natiza machine is, you can find data based on the principle of where not to look. And that's a scalable model, because no matter how big that Walmart gets, I can always find a battery kiosk. And I don't have to look in the whole store. I can always find it in a very finite you know, set of locations, faster than scanning an index. And that's, that's the big deal about, about being able to do things simpler, faster, and with a lot more power and scalability. You can find me at brightlightconsulting.com. Uh, you can also find me on amazon.com. I've got two books. If you look for my name, now ignore, uh, there's another David Birmingham out there that writes other books on history, that's not me. Uh, but if you look for Natiza uh, and David Birmingham, you'll find me.